Tuesday, September 28th, 2021, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Is it any wonder that we're seeing uh, commodities markets go uh, crazy? Uh, we're seeing shortages everywhere around the world, not just in the UK, of fuel, of labor, uh, everything being disrupted. Well, I'm not surprised. It has taken a long time. It has taken about 12 to 13 years. But uh, after, uh, yeah, 13 years of creating $25 trillion out of thin air, the major world central bankers have a problem uh, on their hands. It's called a crack up boom. It's the hyperinflationary collapse. Yes, uh, we're going to hear a lot of reasons. Uh, for what's happening here in the UK with the petrol stations, with the uh, energy prices. Uh, but uh, deep down, it's uh, because the central bankers and the monetary system, they've created uh, all this phony uh, money out of thin air for too long. And uh, it's not real savings. <laughs> we hear a lot of times the Keynesians especially guys like Ben Bernanke saying that there's an excess amount of savings. Well, it's not real savings, Mr. Bernanke. It's inflated uh, savings. If we had real savings, the world economy would be doing really well uh, and production would be picking up. Prices would be stable. No, we're seeing the unraveling uh, of this uh, policy and that uh, they've been able to keep it uh, under wraps, but uh, I don't think it's going to be for uh, much longer. We're going to talk about how the fiat currencies are unraveling, how we've got shortages. A and I would say that the, the real economy, real people out there, you know, your truck or lorry drivers out there, they've been the ones that been, have been hurt from this. Of course, the, the people on Wall Street at the Federal Reserve, the corrupt central bankers, and I can use that term really because we had two uh, Federal Reserve presidents yesterday, Kaplan and Rosengren, resign in disgrace because they've been caught front running. Uh, I personally think uh, that's just the tip of the iceberg. When I worked in the city of London, and I'm not going to bring names, but I, I do have names. If the European regulators want to uh, find out more about it, they can con contact me. But uh, And it was known, publicly known that uh, a major hedge fund manager from London would go and visit the ECB regularly. And this is about 10, 11 years ago. And why would he do that? Or sheep? It could have been a sheep. Uh... Well, because the ECB had a policy they wanted to set. They wanted to keep interest rates low because of the European sovereign debt crisis. So they needed the market to follow them. So they, they give these people a nod. <laughs> and that's what we need to investigate. Not just Mr. Kaplan and Rosengren, but also who they are in contact with. I, I, I read that Kaplan worked for Goldman Sachs for 23 years. Uh, so I wonder how many uh, uh, private contacts he had with his old buddies and told them what was going to happen. I mean, it's just like a, a, a George Carlin said, <laughs> uh, they have their own club and we're not part of it. And it's amazing that we still trust these central bankers. Uh, hopefully uh, this crack up boom, that's uh, on the way right now. It, it will take a, a while. In Germany, I think, uh, during the Weimar Republic, uh, in uh, 1922, that's when it really kicked off. I think in the summer, maybe a little earlier in 22. And, and then by the end of 23, uh, the Reichsmark had collapsed. And I think uh, we are in the beginnings of this um, hyperinflation. And uh, people will be confused and angry. We can already see here in the UK, people fighting at uh, gas stations or petrol stations. It's going to get a lot worse. <laughs> and the energy prices, gas prices have just started going up and we already have major problems. Uh, it, it will be uh, pretty 
severe winter i would say and the weather will probably not help it will be probably the coldest winter in decades something like that and uh, i'm not smiling because i think it's funny but uh, yes uh, that's what happens it, it, it's akin to you uh, and your neighbors uh, creating let's say a printing press and being able to print all this fiat currency out of thin air, counterfeit it really well, and, and all of a sudden you've got like uh, billions of dollars or pounds worth of purchasing power. How do you think that would, <laughs> that would disrupt your local economy, wouldn't it? Uh, until, of course, uh, the authorities found out and they cracked down on you. Well, we've got the whole central banking cabal. They've been doing that for 13 years. Yes, they look respectable with their uh, expensive suits and their PhDs, but they're just, they're just counterfeiters. And, and that's what you need to understand. And uh, yeah, uh, I've never been through this. I mean, in Brazil, when I was growing up, we did have collapses, but uh, I wasn't uh, aware as much as I am now about the monetary system. And now it's happening to the whole world because the world reserve currency is a big Ponzi scheme it, and it's unraveling. And it's not just going to be the dollar. Everything is going to unravel. All the fiat currencies are going to unravel. And that's why I've been telling people for six years almost now that uh, the best way to hedge against hyperinflation uh, is precious metals. Yes, it's very frustrating <laughs> as I look here, as crude oil is up another uh, 1%, as a natural gas is up another 7%. We've got uh, gold down $9. We got silver down 24 cents. Uh, just take it as a, a gift if you happen to have this uh, crappy fiat currency uh, if you have excess uh, amount of this crappy fiat currency, just take that as an opportunity to exchange it for real money to, to uh, ensure yourself against the collapse. And uh, yes, gold and silver are not investments, but they will act like an investment in a currency collapse. That's what people need to understand. And uh, so... Yeah, before I go and look at the markets, uh, I, I think that uh, the authorities, the SEC in the US, the FCA in the UK, and other regulators like maybe the CFTC, they, they really need to go uh, and crack down on the central bankers, investigate all of them. But uh, of course, that's not going to happen. Maybe once the system implodes, these people will uh, face justice. Uh, just look at Martha Stewart. <laughs> Some years ago, she was put in jail because of something to do with insider trading. Why shouldn't Kaplan and Rosengren and the rest uh, suffer the same fate? Uh, th they need to be investigated because if you and I were doing that, and I guess also members of Congress in the U.S., I know that they're exempt from insider trading rules. So there you go. Uh, with that, let's look at where the markets are this morning. It's 8.23 uh, a.m. London time. We're going to start with uh, the commodities this morning uh, instead of gold and silver, just to show you how uh, crazy these commodities are going. Uh, especially the energy sector and the energy sector of course affects the whole economy because what do you need in an economy uh, to to function you need energy and if the cost of energy is going through the roof it's going to affect things especially when you already have problems bottleneck problems supply chain problems labor shortages and uh it's not just the truck drivers. I think people are starting to realize that they've been ripped off uh, for 13 years and that the money is not worth w what it is, uh, really what we've been told it's worth. All these inflation or CPI statistics, they're, they're just like big lies and people are starting to realize it. 
all the shrinkflation as well is getting even worse. So here you go, we got WTI crude. It's almost at uh, the high we saw in July this year. Uh, we've got Brent crude actually, it's at a three year high, it's almost at 80. So you can see here, we're almost ready to break through key resistance here, which is around 77, I would say, WTI crude. And uh, so much for uh, inflation being transitory. And I think I've been vindicated for go going on all the time about the definition of inflation, <laughs> that inflation is really the increase in the supply of money and credit out of thin air, resulting in rising prices. And they've changed that definition uh, in order to hide it from you because they, <laughs> uh, these measures that they have, CPI or PC, are a big lie. They're doctored. <laughs> They're doctored in order to keep the general public in the boiling water like the frog. I think right now what we're doing, we're jumping out of the water and that's, uh, that's the symptom of the hyperinflation. Um, so natural gas, let's have a look at natural gas. Uh, I was speaking about natural gas, why well, I've been speaking about it more often now, been covering it. And I spoke about how last week we saw a correction. <laughs> it was uh, very shallow down to around 480, as you can see here. Uh, but now it's uh, blown right through the recent high, which was uh, around 565. And this morning we've gotten as high as 630. Uh, and there's still a lot of room on the upside for natural gas, um, as you can see here. Uh, it, it is probably a little bit overbought, but so was lumber when it was going through the roof recently. Uh, markets can stay overbought for a lot longer. So we're not even uh, close to the high we saw back in 2013. And, and look at where we can go if we go through that high of, of 2013, which is very near. It's around six and a half dollars or so. Uh, can you imagine uh, natural gas going to 10 12 16 dollars i mean <laughs> that would be uh, a real trouble for the central bankers and i've noticed like uh yesterday the governor of the bank of england uh, made a speech somewhere and he said yeah we're ready to raise rates <laughs> i mean and, and i've said many times go ahead and raise rates uh, good luck with that you're gonna continue to see rising prices. You're going to continue to see shortages because as Rafi Faber said in one of his recent videos about hyperinflation, I'm going to put a link to it above uh, here in the cards and in the description. He said what we have now is a shortage of good money and that's why uh, producers are unwilling to part with uh, good things for bad money. We, we've got uh, yeah, we've got a huge supply of bad money, but uh, good money, gold and silver, there's a shortage. I highly, uh, I highly recommend you watch that video that Rafi did. He, he uses the analogy of a tree uh, to compare it to hyperinflation. Yes, it sounds funny, but uh, uh, watch the video and you'll understand why. He explained it really well. So... Yeah, I can sense the central bankers are uh, panicking about uh, commodity prices. They realize now that it's not transitory. And uh, yeah, it's their, their hubris that they can think they can uh, inflate the system out of all <laughs> proportion, like $25 trillion in the last 13 years. Uh, yes, the world economy has gone from about 58 trillion to about 80 trillion uh, but you would think you'd get a little boost from borrowing so much and we didn't the u.s economy for example has gone from about 14 trillion in 2008 to now 22 trillion but that equals pretty much the 8 trillion that the fed created out of thin air and the national debt per to gdp has gone from 75 percent to like a, a 130 percent so yeah, it's all unraveling in my opinion. Uh, I think unfortunately the public out there, the general public don't know what's happening and there will be a lot of anger, I think. And uh, unfortunately, 
a lot of the anger uh, will be uh, pointed at the wrong people, <laughs> at the, the petrol stations, at producers, uh, and they won't uh, put the spotlight on the real culprits, which is the, the central banking fiat currency uh, monetary system. That's the real culprit and governments as well who have benefited from all this money printing uh, because all the money printing has done is kept interest rates artificially low so that governments can keep spending. And a lot of that GDP that's been created since 08, a lot of it is government spending. So actually, yeah, this all this QE hasn't really had an impact. As I said, it's not real savings. And that's why we're starting to see everything unravel. So now let's go and look at gold and silver, what they're doing. Yes, they're down today, but as I said, they're going to be the last uh, indicator. Uh, and you will know we're entering the end game when, when the fiat currencies start, start dropping massively versus gold uh, and silver or gold and silver going up in terms of confetti. That's what they are now, confetti, fiat currencies. So right now uh, we've got spot gold down $8 at 1742. It has been as low as 1735. So I can see Andrew Bailey uh, at the Bank of England this morning looking at natural gas and oil and uh, telling his deputies or assistants, uh, well, uh, tell, tell Nigel on the gold desk to keep selling. Tell Nigel to keep selling gold. Uh, call Barclays, call HSBC, tell them we're like uh, leasing, uh, you know, a lot of gold today from the other central bankers, other countries that keep their gold with us. I can see him doing that. You know, uh, that's what's happening. And same with silver. So silver right now is down 24 cents or 1%, 2236. It has been as far down as 2226. Um, so what about the stock market? The Dow futures down 95. The NASDAQ future is down over 1% or 170 points. The uh, S&P 500 futures down half a percent or 25 points. The FTSE is down 30, just above 7,000. Uh, what about the currencies here? The fiat currencies versus the fiat dollar, uh, a losing uh, game, of course, trying to trade confetti versus confetti, you're going to get confetti back. But anyway, this is uh, still what we cover right now. Uh, cable is down 0.2% at 136.70. The euro is down uh, 0.2 as well at 116.73. Uh, the dollar is up versus the yen, almost a third of a percent at 111.30. And the dollar is unchanged versus the Chinese yuan at 643. Six. So what about the situation in China? Yeah, it's not improving. China has uh, followed the same policies as the major central banks. It is one of the major central banks, but I would say at least China has something to show for it. <laughs> They've had uh, infrastructure built. They've got a, a real economy, but they will suffer as well, just like we will anyway. So uh, now to the uh, other uh, currencies here. Uh, we've got the uh, Aussie dollar down almost a third versus the dollar at 72.64. We've got the dollar up uh, an eighth versus the Canadian at 126.46. And we've got the Kiwi dollar down half a percent uh, at 69.77 versus the dollar. So to finish off, let's look at the 10-year uh, yield. Yes, the 10-year yield is start, uh, starting to move higher. We were stuck around 130, 133 for quite a while uh, uh, there this summer. And now as the autumn or fall begins, we're starting to see it rise. We are almost at 154. It's up five basis points on the day. I, I suspect that's helping the dollar, but it, it shouldn't really, uh, especially if, if, if this gets out of control. And out of control, I mean yields rising very quickly. Um, and uh, yes, the Fed is talking about tapering and raising rates, but uh, these are just, uh, this is just mope or management of perception economics. They want to uh, 
uh, steer uh, investors into the wrong places, I would say. Anyway, uh, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Please share it far and wide. Think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet. And you can also follow me on Rumble, Twitter, Facebook, and all these other platforms below here. I wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.